Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. our lives afresh tonight, Lord. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father. Of mercy, grace, of God declares in Acts 1 8 ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and the world great promise from the Lord that belongs to each one of us but I want to help you understand the importance of this why the anointing? Why do we need it? Well, the Bible says it's a must. Jesus said, you shall receive power. This is Acts 1.8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I have taught on this many times, but I want to emphasize this tonight because I think it's so powerful. And I've been really thinking about this. I've had dreams about this. I'm not, really, I'm being honest with you. I believe we need to hear the message all over again. Because many in the church lack the knowledge of why the anointing. What is the anointing? What's the purpose for it? Well, the Bible has much to say about that. Jesus, before he went away, made this amazing promise. Ye shall receive power. His disciples, the apostles, had just asked him, Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? And remember this. That when the Lord rose from the dead, he, he, he gave commandments by the Spirit. By the Spirit. Therefore, the Lord himself needed the anointing of the Spirit after his resurrection. If the Lord would not operate without the anointing before and after the resurrection. Think about you and I. The Bible declares in Acts chapter 1, he gave commandments by the Spirit. Forty days he appeared to his disciples. The Bible talks about this so mightily and powerfully. Infallible proofs. Mighty visitations. The Bible says he ate with them. Peter talks about this in Acts when he said, we've seen him, we are his witnesses. We have eaten with him, so he wasn't a spirit. And the Lord said, a spirit does not have flesh and bone like I have. Come, put your fingers in, 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 in my wounds, in the nail prints. The Bible tells us very clearly that this same Jesus would not give a commandment without the Holy Spirit, the resurrected Lord, operating under the anointing still. And we don't think about that. He gave commandments by the Spirit. He did not give those commandments without hearing what the Holy Ghost had to say about it. And, and this is so mighty. When you think about it, it's really powerful. Oh, this is marvelous, marvelous. Until the day, verse 2, Acts 1, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He, every commandment he gave for those 40 days, 
till the day he was taken up, till the day he ascended on high, he gave by the Spirit. The Bible says it's the anointing that will destroy Antichrist. For the Word of God says that when Jesus returns, he will destroy the enemy, Antichrist, and all his enemies by the breath of his mouth. The breath of his mouth is the Holy Spirit. Whenever the Bible talks about the sword, it's the Word. When the Bible talks about the breath, it's the Spirit. The same Holy Spirit whose breath restored the world in Genesis. The same Holy Spirit who anointed Moses to lead Israel out of Egypt. The same Holy Spirit who anointed Joshua to bring them into the promised land. The same Holy Spirit who anointed the prophets to speak the word with power. The same Holy Spirit that revealed the Messiah to the prophets. The same Holy Spirit that anointed King David and gave him the promise of being the father of Messiah. The same Holy Spirit that came upon the Son of God in the waters of baptism. The same Holy Spirit that anointed him for service to do wonders and miracles. The same Holy Spirit that gave him the power to endure Calvary. Never forget, it's through the Spirit he conquered. It's the Holy Spirit who raised him from the dead. It's the Holy Spirit whose power literally took Jesus from earth to glory. It's the Holy Spirit who will bring him back to earth again. What is that cloud by the Holy Ghost? It says a cloud received him. That's the Holy Spirit. He will come back on the clouds. That's the Holy Spirit, the power of God. Cloud by day, far by night. What was that cloud in the Old Covenant by the Holy Spirit? This same Holy Spirit is the person who wants to empower every one of you sitting in this audience. Wants to empower everyone watching this on TV. We need His power. Think about the amazing power displayed already in Scripture. Think about the power that restores this whole planet to perfection. Think about the power that brought light into darkness in Genesis. God says, let there be light after the Holy Ghost moved. God spoke after the Holy Ghost moved. His voice is heard only by the Spirit. The Spirit is the breath behind the voice. If I had no breath, nobody would hear my voice tonight. You'd all have to read my lips. It's my voice that gives me the power to be heard. It's the breath behind it that delivers it. It's the same Holy Spirit. Think about His power. Splitting the Red Sea, that's power. Feeding them with manna, power. Filling the wilderness with flesh, power. Bringing the waters out of the rock, Power. Literally bringing them to the promised land, giving them the possession of the heathen. Power. And then when Jesus came to earth, this is awesome, amazing. It's the Holy Spirit who took God and turned him into a seed. The seed of the woman. Think about the Holy Ghost who took the eternal one. The heavens and heavens cannot contain him, the Bible says. He that inhabits eternity, the Bible calls him the eternal one. This is life eternal that they might know thee and Jesus whom thou hast sent is what it says in John 17. This same Lord Jesus, this eternal word was made flesh. In other words, God Almighty the one who is eternity, the one who holds eternity, the one in whom eternity lives and exists, became a seed by the Spirit. The limitless one became limited in the body of a virgin named Mary. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that took God Almighty and transformed him into a seed. 
That's awesome. So Jesus is called in the scripture the child of the Holy Ghost. And this same Jesus is now a child born in Bethlehem as a babe, grows up and matures, the scripture says, in stature. He grew in stature. He, be, he began to become a man. He was a baby who became a man. And then the Holy Spirit anoints him, not only protects him, but anoints him. Not only conceived him, but anoint him. He anoints him for service. Right on schedule, right on time, River Jordan, as Jesus comes out of the waters of baptism, he's praying, and the Holy Spirit comes as a dove upon him, resting on him. John the Baptist sees the Holy Ghost in physical form and says, Behold the Lamb. I think about some of this, I think, if the Holy Spirit is so powerful to take the God of glory and turn him into a seed, think what he can do with you. And then the Bible says that he, the Holy Spirit, is the one who literally took him on the palm of his hand and he ascended on high by the power of the Spirit. That's awesome. The Holy Spirit is the omnipresence of the Lord himself. The Holy Spirit is Jesus without limit, as I've said many times. Because when Jesus was on the earth, he was limited in body. When he became a man, he was limited in body. He, the eternal word, became a human being in physical form, limited to a human body. Only could, could be only in one place at one time in that body. Oh, people say, well, Jesus is in my heart. No, he's not in your heart. He's in glory. The one in your heart is the Holy Spirit. You call him Jesus, you're right. He is the, the Spirit of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the limitless Savior. He's the limitless Redeemer. He's the one who is dwelling into our hearts. Not only is he the omnipresence of the Lord, he is the omniscient power of the Lord. He's the power of the Trinity. He's the one whose power created this world. It's his power that holds it together. It's his power that's holding your body together. Now this blessed Holy Spirit whose power is holding you together wants to anoint your life. So Jesus said, Acts 1.8, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is upon you. Now, I've always thought about three experiences in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit with me, the Holy Spirit in me, and the Holy Spirit on me. The Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit with me is before salvation. Even before salvation, He came to convict me of sin, to lead me to the cross, to make Jesus a reality to my heart. And then He stays with us forever, the Bible says. So he's with you before salvation, he's with you at salvation, and he's with you after salvation. And with you means companion. With you means comforter, one by your side. Now, the same Lord said, he shall be in you. The, the one with you now is also in you. Think he's with you and in you. He is around you and inside of you. Now, in you to sanctify you, in you to nourish your spirit, man, in you to energize you, in you to literally cause you to walk with him in righteousness. Because when he's with me, he convicts me. When he's with me, he guides me. When he's with me, he leads me. When he's with me, he's there as a friend, a companion, a comforter, a paraclete. Walking with me, talking with me, fellowshipping with me. It's all with, 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 with. But then it says in. He, he must come in. When he comes in, it happens at salvation. And at that moment, I am sanctified. I become sanctified. Because my, my inner man becomes one with him. He that is joined to, to the Lord is one spirit. Inside of you, there are no two spirits. There's only one spirit, and that's the Holy Spirit. 
Your spirit disappears in his spirit. Your spirit man becomes one with his spirit. Somebody please say something. The Holy Spirit becomes the spirit in your life. And when you're filled with, this, with the Holy Spirit, he literally, everything is shown in you. Your language changes. Your behavior changes. The look on your face changes. Everything about you changes. Our precious Lord Jesus gave us this amazing promise. Ye shall receive power. What an amazing, awesome promise that the Lord gave you and I. This is his gift to us as believers. Power. The power of the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you because God knows we need it on this earth. Now think about this, that this amazing power is available for free. You and I don't have to pay for it. We don't have to beg for it. All we have to do is surrender and God will anoint us. Remember in the house of Cornelius, they did not even pray. They just received as Peter was preaching the gospel in Acts chapter 10. They received the anointing and began to pray, pray and speak in tongues. I believe a fresh anointing is coming on your life. I have no doubt. Because you see, you see what's going on in this world, the darkness, gross darkness covering the earth. God has promised that his glory would be seen on you. The anointing of God belongs to you as his child. We as God's people, it's our inheritance. It's God's promise to us. It's a part of our inheritance. And all the Lord, all God wants you to do is simply surrender. Like the wind, that's God's gift to the world. No, listen, listen. Spread your wings. That's all you have to do. We don't know where the wind comes from or what it's going to. But if we surrender to it, it will take us higher and higher all the time. All we have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and surrender. I want to pray with you. I want to believe God with you today. That God's power will be yours every single day. Not just sometimes, all the time. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses for our wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, anoint everyone watching this program today. Lord, my God, let your mighty power descend that they might walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your word declares it's not by might or power, but by my spirit. Lord, only the power of the Holy Spirit can change our lives. Use each person, I pray, in Jesus' blessed and mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. And I want to pray for your healing right now. Believe God to heal you. It's your inheritance. Blessed Jesus, heal every person watching. Lord, we rebuke that sickness. We command that cancer to go, that heart disease to go, that diabetes to go. Arthritis must go in Jesus' precious name. Heal everyone calling upon your sweet and mighty name. Fibromyalgia has just been healed somebody with an eye infection also healed thank you lord there's a jerry watching me who's been drinking quite a bit lord set him free from that oppression set him free from that oppression in jesus name i see a lady with a growth on your neck it's totally leaving right now even as i'm praying it's gone a stomach also has been healed i give you praise jesus the greatest miracle is salvation if you don't know the lord just pray after me dear is jesus I'm a sinner, Lord. Forgive my sins. Wash me now with your precious blood. Come into my heart and save my soul. Give me your power to live the Christian life with victory. Amen. You prayed with me. I want to send you something to help you to live the Christian life. And listen, I have a teaching for all of you on the anointing that I'm telling you it's a must because a fresh anointing is coming on your life. You just need to know how to unlock the door. You, you just need to ignite the engine, you know, and live in that blessed power. And it's all yours. All you have to do is call today and get that wonderful teaching that will bless your life over and over and over again. We're having a prayer meeting here, September 28th, a very special prayer meeting because this is 
you know, Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacle that season, which is quite powerful. And I want you to send me your prayer request. I'm going to have some powerful people with me here. We're, we're going to all come into agreement. Listen, a few days ago here in, in our studio, it was electric as we prayed together. I'm telling you, there's something happening, really. That's quite powerful in, in, in our ministry. I want you to send your prayer request because there's some powerful pe people coming to join me. And we are going to believe God for every need in your life to be met. I'm telling you, believe God this time that every need, every need, not, not, not most, but all your needs be met. Send your prayer request to Post Office Box 16000, Irving, Texas, and just trust God to do it. Do it today. Please don't miss doing this. Love you. And remember, greater days are ahead for you. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And Jesus loves you totally, completely, and forever. Bye-bye. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Jesus said, you shall receive power. This is Acts 1.8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I have taught on this many times, but I want to emphasize this tonight because I think it's so powerful. I believe we need to hear the message all over again. Because many in the church lack the knowledge of why the anointing. What is the anointing? What's the purpose for it? On today's program, Pastor Benny Hinn continues his teaching from yesterday on the importance of the anointing. He'll examine the three levels and how it increases in your life. This message can significantly impact your spiritual life and power as you develop a greater understanding of what the anointing is and why you need it. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is upon you. Now remember I just talked about He's with you to comfort and to guide and to lead and fellowship. He's in you to sanctify, to sanctify you. He's in you to purify your life. He's in you to strengthen your spirit and so on. He's in you to, to be, become one with your spirit man and take control. But now he comes on you once you qualify to be trusted with his power to be on you. On you means for service. He's with me to guide, to lead. To convict. He's in me to sanctify, purify, control my life. But he's on me to use me. He's on me that I can be of service to the kingdom of God. He's on me so I can be useful. So Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is upon you. That's the great promise of Acts 1.8, which is the third promise. Because the first two promises are John 14, 16, 17. Because in John 14, 16, he was with you. And then he's in you. But thank God for Acts 1, 8. He's on you. Now, the anointing is a must. A must in every life. The Bible commands every one of us to be anointed. You know the Bible is so precious in, in Ecclesiastes 9, 8, it says, Let thy garments be always white, and let your head lack no ointment. Don't lack the anointing on your life. Let your garments always be clean, because if you're clean, you qualify. And then, don't lack the ointment. Let your head lack no ointment. Don't walk without the anointing on your life. Your head speaks of your authority. That's Ecclesiastes 9.8. What scripture did I give you? Say Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8 says, Let your garments always be white and let your head lack no ointment. So don't ever lack the anointing on your life, on your head, on your authority. The Lord wants the anointing to saturate you. In the Psalms 23 verse 5, it says what? He has anointed my head with oil and my cup runs over with it. Not only does he want to anoint your head, he wants to anoint your garment. He wants to anoint your life. Your cup running over literally with the anointing of God. 
thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know, God always anoints us in the presence of the enemies so he can show how mighty he really is. While the devil is looking at you, God is anointing you. Somebody please say hallelujah. You prepare a table before me in the presence of those enemies who want to destroy me, but they cannot because you anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over while they're looking at me being blessed. And they are being tormented by the anointing that is on me. God always anoints you in the best times. He anoints you when you're attacked. He gives you power when the devil wants to destroy you. When did God anoint the apostles? He anointed them when their enemies were out there mocking them. Their enemies were looking at it saying they're crazy, they're drunk people. God never anoints in private. He always anoints in public. He loves to show off his children. He wants to be, he's proud of his children. He wants to let the world see his children being blessed by the anointing. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says, running over. Say the anointing will run over. Say it. Say it again. That's that anointing in Acts 1 8. On you, you'll run over. You, you anoint my head. Now, watch, watch. The Holy Spirit with you to walk with you, the Holy Spirit in you to sanctify you. But when that blessed Holy Ghost is on you, there's oil that's going to show up. It's going to flow down your life, your garment. And the Bible says something marvelous about this. It says everything you have in life, in the Christian life, you have because of the anointing on you. The anointing is a mighty gate that brings a lot of gifts into your life. The second God anoints your life, everything is yours. If God gives you the most precious, he'll give you the rest. Numbers 18, verse 8. Numbers 18, verse 8. It says, everything we have, we have because of the anointing. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I've also given thee the charge of mine heave offerings, of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them. Why? By reason of the anointing. And not only you, but your children forever so everything i'm giving you your office your privilege the responsibilities you have as a priest that you can offer these hallowed things of israel to the lord your ministry everything is because of the anointing the anointing is a gate that leads you into a place a place of abundance and blessings oh this is marvelous now, the anointing begins small and then gets big. The anointing begins first, what I call the leper's anointing. It begins at salvation. That's found in Leviticus 14, verse 18, where God anoints the leper and brings him into the kingdom. So God anoints you and brought you into the kingdom to be his children. That's the first level. But then there's a second level, and that's Exodus 30, 30, that talks about the, the anointing coming for ministry. On the priests. First, the leper got it. But then the priest got it. So not only does it bring lepers into the kingdom, that's sinners who become saints because of the anointing, it also causes priests to serve the Lord. Then we have the third level of the anointing, which is in 2 Samuel 5, verse 3 and verse 7, that talks about the anointing on David for authority, for dominion. That's when he became king over the whole land. So you've got the first anointing in Leviticus 14, Leviticus 14, 18, which is for the leper to come into the camp or be saved, that is. Then you have the second level, the priest who, who serves God, Exodus 30, 30. Then the king with authority and dominion also received the anointing. So watch this. It, be, it, be, it belongs to three groups, lepers, priests, and kings. It's the anointing that turns a leper into a saint. It's the anointing that turns a man into a priest or a king to rule. It's all by the anointing. Hallelujah. It's the anointing of God that brings you out of leprosy. It's the anointing of God that brings you into priesthood. 
It's the anointing of God that brings you into a place of dominion and authority. You cannot do it without the anointing. Did I, did I get through to you? Good. Now, in the New Testament, we see the same thing. We, we see John 20, 22. First level. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Brought them into salvation. Then they are able to minister. Those same people in Acts 2, 2. Now they're speaking in tongues. The power of God is on them. The city of Jerusalem shaken by the power of God on them. That's for ministry. They began to minister. After that, the gospel. 3,000 got saved. Remember that? But they received the anointing for dominion in Acts 4.31. The place was shaken again. Another earthquake took place. They were filled with the Holy Ghost again. They were empowered again for the third time. Not the second time. Because the first time was John 20.22. 20, the second time was Acts 2.2. And the third one was Acts 4.31. But now they were, the results were so awesome because they were anointed for dominion. It was after that anointing that the shadow of Peter healed the sick. It was after that anointing, multitudes were added to the church. It was after that anointing that people began to be raised from the dead. Don't you remember? Peter went down to a place called Joppa where I was born. And raised a girl named Tabitha, Tabitha Dorcas, from the dead. That happened after he was anointed the third time. So when we see Acts 4.31, that third level of the power of God. Now, God begins to move with, with waves of power. So much so, that the Bible says in Acts chapter 5, everyone in Jerusalem was healed. Think about that anointing being so powerful, it swept the whole city into a miracle place, into the miraculous. A whole city was healed. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen here in America and around the world. It's going to happen. It must happen again. It was after that anointing of Acts chapter 4, 31, that we saw... Peter's shadow, imagine a shadow being anointed, dear God, I can understand a stick of wood being anointed, or a handkerchief, but a shadow, that's real power. God Almighty anoints the shadow to heal the sick, and it was after that Cornelius got saved. It was after that the Gentiles came in, it was after that Saul became Paul, it was after that we see the miracles multiplying mightily in the book of Acts. We go from addition in Acts 2, multiplication in Acts 6.1, and great multiplication in Acts 6.7. You see the increase from addition, multiplication, great multiplication. All by the anointing. Now, that anointing comes on your life. It increases on your life. It increases three ways. All three levels increase three ways. Are you still listening? Yes. Number one, it increases by the blood. The blood intensifies it. The Bible says in Ruth, book of Ruth, chapter 3, verse 3. Are you people enjoying this? Yes. Good. I want you to. Ruth 3, 3. In Ruth 3, 3, it says this. It says, wash yourself and then anoint yourself. Naomi tells Ruth, wash and then anoint. Wash yourself and anoint yourself. You see it right there? Yeah. And then put your clothes on. And then get down to the floor. But first, wash yourself and then anoint yourself. Wash thyself, therefore, and anoint thee. She could not come into the, the presence of Boaz. She could not exercise her, her authority with her kinsmen. Till she was washed and anointed. You cannot come into the presence of God. You cannot come into the presence of your Redeemer and exercise your place of authority without the anointing. You must be washed with the blood first. The blood gives you access. The second thing the Bible says that intensifies all three levels. Say all three levels. All three levels, all three levels of the anointing intensify not only through the blood but also 
The Bible says, oh, this is marvelous. Through the word, Job 29.6. Job 29.6. The word of God intensifies the, the anointing. When the word of God begins to fill your life, and the riches of the word gets into your heart. Oh, marvelous power is released. So the Bible says, when I washed my steps with butter. Butter is God's word. The riches of God's word. Remember, we go from skim milk to milk to butter. There's three levels to the word of God. Babies need skim milk. As you grow older, wholesome milk. But then that butter comes out of it. But you got to wash your steps in it. When I washed my steps with that thick butter, then the, it says what? Watch this. The rock, that's Jesus, began pouring out rivers of oil on my life. My God is right. Say, my God. My God. The word must saturate your walk. When I wash my steps with butter, it means that when my walk began to be affected by the Word of God, the wealth of the Word of God began to affect my soul and spirit, man. When that happens, the anointing is yours automatically. You, you, you don't even have to ask for it. Just receive it. Prayer also intensifies it. Because it says in Acts, remember I just read it, Acts 4, 24 through 31, when they had prayed, the place was shaken. They, pray, they had to pray. They had to pray. Acts 1.8, they prayed. Acts 4.31, they prayed. You got to pray. You can't just expect the anointing on you without prayer. So, three ways. It intensifies three ways. One, God's blood, the blood of Jesus. Ruth 3.3. 3. Number two, God's word. Job 29.6. And number three, prayer. Acts 4.31. Tomorrow, Pastor Benny concludes his teaching on the importance of the anointing as he examines the Holy Spirit's anointing on your life for service in the kingdom of God. That anointing is so powerful that Jesus received that anointing without measure. That means there's no, no limit to it. Lift your hands and say, I'm ready for no limit. No limit. Don't limit God with that anointing. Don't limit God. And that's the anointing that will destroy every bondage in your life. Don't miss this informative and powerful program. The power of God is yours. It's yours for the asking. It's yours for the taking. Today you heard a teaching on the part of God. The anointing of God must be understood. And once you know how to flow in it, it's so easy. Because all you have to do is simply spread your wings. Just surrender. You know, we, we don't know where the wind comes from or where it's going and how high it will go. All we have to do is surrender to the wind. And that is what Jesus said in John 3, that the believer is like the wind. You see, when the power of God comes on you, dependent on your surrender, God will use you in a mighty way to touch lives around the world. Not only will your life be blessed, your life being part. Think about having a mighty prayer life. Think about opening this Bible and understanding it. Because the Bible says that the anointing which abides in you, 1 John 2, 27, will teach you all things. In other words, you open this Bible, you'll understand things that are hard to understand for most people. But you will, you will have such an easy time understanding it because the anointing opens our eyes to truth, protecting us from deception from harm, from demon power, and on and on, bringing us freedom from bondage. Jesus, by the anointing, healed all oppressed of the devil. If the anointing can bring healing to all who are oppressed, think what that anointing can do in your life. All you have to do is receive it. Ye shall receive power is an awesome promise that the Lord gave us. The power of God is the gift of God to your life. And all we have to do is simply ask for it. Surrender and you'll have it. You'll receive it. Let me pray with you. Let's believe God right now together for the anointing on your life. Precious Jesus, Lord, you said if we agree, it'll be done. And we come into agreement right now that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come upon that person watching the program. Lord, my God, let the anointing come upon them mightily. Lord, heal that sickness in Jesus' name. Remove that bondage in Jesus' name. 
by the anointing, Lord, meet that financial need in Jesus' name. Lord, you said all we need is your power. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, anoint us today with your power for the glory of Jesus, our Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. You're looking at a teaching I want to send you on the anointing because I believe God is sending a fresh anointing on your life. Listen, the days that are coming are dark days, but not for you. You're going to have bright days, brighter than ever. And the more you walk with God, the brighter you will, you will walk into this brightness. The Bible says that the way of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. There is no darkness for you. There's only light. Walk in that anointing. And that's why I want you to have the whole teaching. Make sure to have it today. The announcer will tell you how you can get it. Don't forget a day of prayer coming up, the 28th of September, right after the, the Day of Atonement, a powerful season. That feast is very, very special to God, and God wants to bless you, meet every need, answer every prayer, that you might walk in peace and prosperity. Send in that prayer request and write what your needs are, and then send it in. A lot of wonderful people are coming to be with me on the 28th, powerful people. We're going to lay our hands and believe God for you, that God will meet every need because there is power, tremendous power in agreement. Please do it today. Post Office Box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas. Now, before we go, the greatest miracle is salvation. Remember, that's the greatest miracle. If you do not know our wonderful Jesus, he says to you now, come unto me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. What a wonderful promise. Have you heard anybody else say that? No. Only Jesus has spoken those words. Come to him today. Just right now, just say, dear Jesus, I come to you, Lord. I'm a sinner, precious Lord. Forgive my sins, which are many. Cleanse me now from all of them, Lord, and wash me with your blood. Make me clean, I pray, and I will be clean. Come into my heart today and save my soul. Save my wretched soul, I pray, and make me whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, I feel the anointing. Lord, fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. Fill them to overflowing in the name of Jesus. Don't you love the Lord? It's so precious to us. And today, please sow a seed for the work of God. I'm traveling to the world, having great crusades on television daily around the world. The gospel is being preached and to Jesus be the praise. And as you sow, you ignite the laws of prosperity. You activate the laws of prosperity. Every time you read anything about prosperity, it depends on faith. God is looking for the amount of faith your seed releases. It's not the amount of money you give. It's how much faith it releases inside of you and through you. So when you give, God looks at that faith. Listen, our need, yes, it'll touch his heart. Our faith will move his hand. All you have to do today is sow seed. God wants to prosper you. He rejoices in your prosperity. It's his pleasure to bless your life financially. All things to enjoy, the Bible says. He's given us all things to enjoy. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and He wants you to enjoy it. But all you have to do, release your faith, igniting your faith with, with, a, with a seed. Release that seed out of your hand, and God will release the harvest out of His hand. Do it today. Post office box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas. Remember, greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. This week, Pastor Benny Hinn has been teaching on the importance of the anointing and why we need it. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is upon you. Now remember I just talked about He's with you to comfort and to guide and to lead and fellowship. He's in you to sanctify, to sanctify you. He's in you to purify your life. He's in you to strengthen your spirit and so on. 
is in you to, to be become one with your spirit man and take control. But now he comes on you once you qualify to be trusted with his power to be on you. On you means for service. He's with me to guide, to lead, to convict. He's in me to sanctify, purify, control my life. But he's on me to use me. He's on me that I can be of service to the kingdom of God. Now, Pastor Benny concludes this message which can significantly impact your spiritual life and power for service as you develop a greater understanding of what the anointing is and why you need it. The anointing is the overflow of the life of God's Son. When it starts to flow on you, oh, Lord, help me get this out to them. You got to siphon it. Siphon. You siphon it as you're in the presence of God. You see, the presence of God manifests it. So now I just explained to you the three levels. The first level when lepers become saints, and the second level when priests begin to minister, and third level when God gives you authority and dominion. You see it in the life of the apostles, and in fact the life of David himself. Because David too was anointed three times. He was anointed first among his brethren. The second time he became king over one tribe. And the third time king over the whole land. So we, we, we see this many times in the Bible repeated. All three anointings mentioned more than once. But even though we see those levels. We got to understand. That once that anointing is on you. It, in, it, it will intensify. It will intensify when you apply the blood. It will intensify when you read the word and get the word in you. It will intensify when you pray and seek God. But now the Bible has something else to say about this. That this same anointing, you've got to do something about it. People ask me all, all the time, well, how do you receive it? Because, see, the anointing doesn't stay overnight. You've got to get a fresh one in the morning. The Holy Spirit never leaves you, but the anointing lifts. I'm talking about the anointing on you. you got to get this because if you don't get it, you're going to miss something. The anointing in you never leaves you. The anointing on you does. It leaves you when you're done. So there is an anointing inside of you, totally different than the one on your life. I am not talking now about the Holy Spirit's power for guidance, which the Bible talks about, it, He's with you. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit in you to sanctify. I'm talking about that specific anointing for service. That anointing for service is vitally important. And, and I only, can, can, can we go a little deeper? Yeah. That, that anointing for service the Bible says something marvelous about it. It is in you, 1 John 2, 27, in addition to the Holy Ghost being in you, that anointing is also in you. But that anointing is in you because the Bible says only then can you learn it is truth. There's no lie in it. In other words, when that anointing is, and please put it on the screen, 1 John 2, 27. When you get that anointing inside of you, by the presence of God, it's imparted. Now, you pay attention. Can I zoom in a little bit? The presence of the Lord manifests. The presence of Jesus manifests when I worship Him. The presence of Jesus manifests when I commune with Him. The presence of Jesus manifests when I read His Word. When the presence of Jesus manifests, then he becomes more real than life, more real than me or my troubles. So I stand in the presence of the Lord because worship brings that reality. Communion brings his reality. The word brings his reality. Now as I stand in, in his presence, the, the, the anointing of God is hid in it. I know I'm giving a lot of inf information, but I'll, 
I'll break it down for you so you can get it. That anointing of God is hidden inside that glory called the presence. That's Habakkuk 3, 4. As it talks about that the power of God is hiding inside his, his glory. Now you, stay with me a minute because this is marvelous. In fact, you know, it'll be, it'll be good if you'll go to Habakkuk 3, 4 on the screen, then we'll go back to 1 John 2. But the, the, the power of God is hid inside His glory. So, you stand and worship, or commune, or receive the word, and now the presence of Jesus becomes real. And the presence of Jesus is His own person, Himself. I will never forget a lady who came into this studio. She was standing right on this corner here. I'll never forget this. She had sung a song on one of the old Bill Gaither uh, uh, tapes. And I still remember this as long. I think I'll never forget that moment. I laid hands on her, and she was, she was literally caught in the glory of God, that woman, right here. And I said, Lady, what's happening to you? She said, I'm in the presence of God Almighty. She felt such glory that she could not talk. And, and, and I've had that many times in my life when I literally am overwhelmed. And so have you. We become overwhelmed by the, by the personality of Jesus Christ, by the reality of the Master. At that moment, I've got to do something to release that anointing, to siphon the anointing out of His presence. And I siphon it through surrender. That's how you siphon it. When I surrender, he releases it. He releases it only when I surrender. And when I surrender, I have to give him my vessel. He anoints what I give him. He cannot anoint any, anything I keep back. He only anoints what I give him. So when I give him my body, he'll touch it. That's what I mean by siphon. You give him something to use. You give him your vessel to fill and empower. And at that moment when I surrender, I literally feel something come on me. But never forget that that anointing has also been inside of me. First John 2, 27. But now look what Habakkuk 3, 4 says. His brightness was like the light, horns or power coming out of his hands. And there is the hiding of that mighty power. But there is that First John 2, 27 that talks about that anointing abides in you. It, and it abides. It doesn't leave. But the anointing which you have received abides in you. Abides in you. Abides means it doesn't go away. Therefore, the anointing for service splits. It splits into two sections of my life. One comes in me that never leaves me. And that anointing is for revelation truth. It says that no man will teach you. The anointing will teach you. It protects you from deception. There's no lie in it. And then it helps you to abide in the Lord. That's in addition to his presence. God gives you power inside of you to keep you walking with him. Are you, are you listening? Totally different than his presence. But then there is that anointing that's on you for service. That's not exactly, how would I say this so carefully? It's not within, it's without. That anointing comes on you when you minister. It comes on you when you preach. It comes on you when you are serving the Lord. And then it lifts when you're done. It's like putting a jacket on and taking it off. That anointing is for your office. Now, the Bible says that that anointing, that anointing has to be siphoned. I don't, I don't have to siphon 1 John 2, 27. God gives that to me automatically when I receive the Holy Spirit's power in my life. But then there is that anointing on me that I have to siphon. How many understood what I said? Put your hands up. High. Oh, that's good. Well, and the, Listen, the Lord will give you clearer uh, and clearer knowledge as you study this. This anointing that I have to siphon for service is feelable. You feel it. 
You can't feel the presence, but my goodness, you feel the power on you. You cannot feel that anointing in you, but you sure feel the one on you. That anointing is tangible. It can be touched. You can handle it with your hands, literally. And, and it's a commodity. It's, it's from heaven. I have felt the anointing on my hands. It's like a heavy weight comes on my hands. Sometimes I feel like electricity. Sometimes I feel like my hands get heavy. You have too, haven't you? That anointing, when it starts to come, people often feel it in their mouth like a burning fire. That's Jeremiah 5.14. Sometimes it's a fire in your heart. That's Jeremiah 20, verse 9. Sometimes it comes on you and you start to shake. That's Daniel 10.10. 10. Daniel shook under the anointing. But it's that feelable, tangible, touchable anointing. Are you still there? Then there's another way we feel it, and that's when our hearts begin to rejoice for no reason. You start getting happy. That's Psalm 45, 1. It says, my heart is entitling a good thing. That's what David says about it. It's like an overflow. How many of you ever felt joy suddenly? You start humming and singing for no reason, huh? But then there's, there's another one. That's Luke 24, 32. Did not our hearts burn while he talked to us? There is a place where your heart starts burning. You feel, ah, you know, and you don't really, you, you cannot explain what's going on. You just feel a, a nearness to the, to, to the Lord, and you don't know how, what it's all about, what's going to happen. But there's another way I feel the anointing. And that's Acts 18, verse 5, where Paul says, I was constrained in the spirit. You feel an urge. I got to do this. I got to say it now. That's called a constraint. He was constrained in the spirit to preach the gospel. He felt he had to do it now. How many ever felt that in your life? You feel like I got to do it. I got to say it. That something starts to stir you. You got to just speak it out. And then there's another thing you feel. Uh, overwhelming joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory is what the Bible calls it. That is also the anointing. Now, I'm going to close with this. I want to continue in two weeks. The anointing can be transferred, that anointing on you. Are you learning anything? Yes. You, you cannot transfer the one in you, nor can you feel it. But the one on you, absolutely. It can be transferred. Transferred amazing, amazingly through your hands. When you lay hands on somebody, it's released. That's Acts 19.11. Transferred through your clothes, uh, handkerchiefs, things that are on your body. I'm going to understand that. Come on. She touched the hem of his garment and felt virtue. Jesus felt it. He said, virtue has gone out of me. He felt something leaving him, but she didn't touch him. She touched his clothes. Are you still listening? Because your clothes become channels of the power of God. Because you're wearing them while you're ministering. That's act in, in Acts 19, 12. And of course, you know, in Mark 5, where the woman touched his clothes. The Lord's hem, the hem of his garment. Acts 5, 15, it's transferred through the shadow of Peter. 2 Kings 4, 16 through 29. It was transferred through a piece of wood. Elisha, his staff. But don't forget the staff of Moses too. The rod of Moses split the Red Sea. The rod of Moses turned, wa turned water and rivers into blood. That's the anointing that caused it. But that rod of Elisha, oh my goodness, was power in it. Tremendous power. But it requires faith because Gehazi could not release it out of that piece of wood. Because he was not qualified. It was sin in his life. That's why it didn't work. Sin will think that the anointing can actually fill wood. That's awesome when you think about it. That the anointing can pour be poured into a piece of wood. And that wood becomes a an extension of the power of God. Wow. That anointing is so powerful. That Jesus received that anointing without measure. 
John 3.34, he received it without measure. That means there's no, no limit to it. Lift your hands and say, I'm ready for no limit. No limit. Don't limit God with that anointing. Don't limit God. And that's the anointing that will destroy every bondage in your life. Because Acts, in the book of Acts, we see that so powerfully. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power to heal all those oppressed. Every bondage is broken by the anointing. We release the anointing on your life right now in Jesus' name. You're watching in your homes. The anointing has been flowing here real strong in the studio. And the people are praying with intensity for you. Receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' name. Lift your voices, saints of God. Release it out of you. In the name of Jesus, receive that fresh anointing on your life. Receive your healing. Receive that liberty from bondage in Jesus' glorious name. Lord, heal your people around the world right now. Those that heard the word today, Lord Jesus, heal, deliver. Bring them out of that bondage and oppression. Bring them into blessings, prosperity, abundance in the name of Jesus. Say Amen. Three times. Amen. Strong. Amen. Our precious Lord Jesus gave us this amazing promise. Ye shall receive power. What an amazing, awesome promise that the Lord gave you and I. This is His gift to us as believers. Power. The power of the Holy Spirit is God's gift to you because God knows we need it on this earth. Now think about this, that this amazing power is available for free. You and I don't have to pay for it. We don't have to beg for it. All we have to do is surrender and God will anoint us. Remember in the house of Cornelius, they did not even pray they just received as Peter was preaching the gospel in Acts chapter 10. They received the anointing and began to pray, pray and speak in tongues. I believe a fresh anointing is coming on your life. I have no doubt. Because you see, you see what's going on in this world. The darkness, gross darkness covering the earth. God has promised that his glory would be seen on you. The anointing of God belongs to you as his child. We as God's people, it's our inheritance. It's God's promise to us. It's a part of our inheritance. And all the Lord, all God wants you to do is simply surrender. Like the wind, that's God's gift to the world. No, listen, listen. Spread your wings. That's all you have to do. We don't know where the wind comes from or where it's going to. But if we surrender to it, it will take us higher and higher all the time. All we have to do is call upon the name of Jesus and surrender. I want to pray with you. I want to believe God with you today that God's power will be yours every single day. Not just sometimes, all the time. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses for our wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, anoint everyone watching this program today. Lord, my God, let your mighty power descend that they might walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your word declares it's not by might or power, but by my spirit. Lord, only the power of the Holy Spirit can change our lives. Use each person, I pray, in Jesus' blessed and mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. And I want to pray for your healing right now. Believe God to heal you. It's your inheritance. Blessed Jesus, heal every person watching. Lord, we rebuke that sickness. We command that cancer to go, that heart disease to go, that diabetes to go. Arthritis must go in Jesus' precious name. Heal everyone calling upon your sweet and mighty name. Fibromyalgia has just been healed. Somebody with an eye infection also healed. Thank you, Lord. There's a Jerry watching me who's been drinking quite a bit. Lord, set him free from that oppression. Set him free from that oppression in Jesus' name. I see a lady with a growth on your neck. It's totally leaving right now. Even as I'm praying, it's gone. 
a stomach ulcer is being healed. I give you praise, Jesus. The greatest miracle is salvation. If you don't know the Lord, just pray after me. Dear is Jesus, I'm a sinner, Lord. Forgive my sins. Wash me now with your precious blood. Come into my heart and save my soul. Give me your power to live the Christian life with victory. Amen. You prayed with me. I want to send you something to help you to live the Christian life. And listen, I have a teaching for all of you on the anointing that I'm telling you it's a must because a fresh anointing is coming on your life. You just need to know how to unlock the door. You, you just need to ignite the engine, you know, and live in that blessed power. The announcer will tell you how you can get it. It comes with a, with a study guide and it's all yours. All you have to do is call today and get that wonderful teaching that will bless your life over and over and over again. We're having a prayer meeting here, September 28th, a very special prayer meeting because this is, you know, Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacle, that season, which is quite powerful. And I want you to send me your prayer request. I'm gonna have some powerful people with me here. We're, we're gonna all come into agreement. Listen, a few days ago here in, in our studio, it was electric as we pray together. I'm telling you, there's something happening, really, that's quite powerful in, in, in our ministry. I want you to send your prayer request because there's some powerful pe people coming to join me. And we are gonna believe God for every need in your life to be met, I'm telling you. Believe God this time that every need, every need, not, not, not most, but all your needs be met. Send your prayer request to Post Office Box 16 Irving, Texas, and just trust God to do it. Do it today. Please don't miss doing this. Love you. And remember, greater days are ahead for you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And Jesus loves you totally, completely, and forever. Bye-bye. Pastor Benny Hinn's comprehensive teaching on operating in the anointing is a series you must have to understand and activate the power of the Holy Spirit. The 12 CD series is regularly $75 and the study manual is $25. But if you'll order now, you can have both for the special television price of only $85. Call or order online today.